Black Hat. A Recollection of Logan Amos Cook, 1886 to 1956. Part of the My American Identity Historical Fiction Project, submitted by Joshua Greaves as of 2015. My name is Logan Amos Cook. I'm a farmer and a father. I've lived on the family farm my entire life. My Cook ancestors have been Americans longer than America itself. Grandfather Ellis arrived in Lynn, Massachusetts in 1643. And the Cooks have lived in New York and Wisconsin from its earliest days. Cook men have always been unassuming, quiet. But I was told that was because they didn't have much to say. My ancestors fought in 1776 and in 1812. My grandfather came from New York and settled on our farm shortly thereafter. And he, and my father, built the house I grew up in. Cooks are common folk, but many common things have happened here that would seem unimportant to most. One uncommon thing, however, will never leave my memory. To whoever is reading this, know with absolute certainty that this is nothing but the truth. The morning was off to a farmhouse start. My mother, Alma, asked me to run errands for her to Gay's Mills. I was so looking forward to being her courier, I forgot my lucky nickel. A small token I found flattened on the railway line that ran to town along the main road. Later in life, I saw this rail line taken up and scrapped for the steel rails. My father, Judson, had readied his horse, Noah, for the trip. Noah was tall, with ears perched higher than I could reach at the time, but mounting him was surprisingly easy, as my Civil War veteran father taught me the trick he'd learned as a soldier before my time. It was one of the few secrets he and I shared. My shoulder bag carried mother's errands and a special something for me on the journey. But getting started was way more important than thinking of refreshment. With a nod from father, I was off. Galloping down the road made me feel like a knight charging into battle with no fear. While I'm not a bookish person, I like to read about medieval knights in my history text. Noah's stable, consistent gait, allowed me to daydream a little. So I took the opportunity, except for the occasional wind gust that brought me back to reality. I was a boy with hopes and dreams, just like the knights of old. After some time, I slowed Noah to a trot. The rolling hills of southwest Wisconsin were quiet and green. Reaching into my shoulder pack, in below mother's envelopes, 
I packed a new sweet drink that I saw at the local store and purchased without consulting anyone. I was saving it for just a moment like this. I didn't tell Mother I had done this, for she would have scolded me, saying a jar of apple cider was much more suitable for a Christian boy than root beer. The cool liquid slid down my parched throat and left a thick, sweet aftertaste in my mouth. This lively nectar should have quenched my thirst, but I was still thirsty. Foolishly, I had not packed a jar of water. Things done in secret are bittersweet. My mother's words echoed in my head. Mercifully, Cousin Clem's farm was coming into view. I jumped off Noah as we cantered up to the house and I filled my belly with frigid well water from the pump. I smiled as the proverb, cold waters to a thirsty soul, crossed my mind. I annoyed and amused Mother when I replied to her admonitions with scripture. Continuing on to town, I dutifully delivered Mother's letters to Pastor Hodges at the Methodist Church Parsonage. The letters were addressed to Mrs. Hodges. What was in them was none of my business. My task completed, I mounted Noah as my custom and pointed his nose to the road leading out of town. As I left the town limits, I heard, then saw, three men talking harshly to the owner of a house about a field's length from the road. One of the angry men wore a black brimmed hat. I slowed Noah to a crawl, and Black Hat saw me. Without taking his eyes off me, Black Hat nodded to the men and they abruptly mounted their horses, heading out the west gate ahead of me and galloping out of sight. How odd, I thought, that the sight of me would cause such an exit. My attention was drawn to Black Hat, not so much because of his harsh tone, but that he acted as if my seeing the event was intolerable, forcing his immediate departure. Who understands adults? I walked Noah at a slow pace down the dirt road as I headed home. The dust from Black Hat's trio had settled in the afternoon sun, and he drifted from my thoughts on a light summer breeze. Familiar landmarks waved at me as I retraced my route back to the farm. The old oak in Mears house pasture. The bend in the creek as I rambled up the road. The curve of the hill that hid our farm just beyond it. I came out of the shadow of the hill and crossed the plank bridge over the creek which runs back into our pasture. I heard, then saw familiar figures with harsh tones standing on our front porch. This time, the onslaught was directed at Father. Its source? Black Hat.
Noah and I stiffened. Black Hat followed my father's gaze. I was gray. Lifeless granite. Black Hat drew his sidearm, pointed his revolver at the horse boy statue, and fired. <laughs> With a crack of thunder and bluster of smoke, Noah heaved slightly, then collapsed. His carcass pinned my right leg under its weight. The splintering of bones sent white hot bayonets of pain through my leg and torso. All movement, all sound, slowed down and melted around me. What I saw next was a fierce, slow motion dance of passion. Father instinctively sidekicked Black Hat in the knee, creating a new, perverse angle to his leg. As Black Hat fell, Father trapped his arm, tearing the revolver from his grasp. In one fluid motion, he pivoted and landed the revolver handle squarely on the jaw of Black Hat's comrade. Father then drove his elbow into the face of the third man, creating a fountain of spewing blood and courses. The melee ended with the trio fixed to God's green earth, as if slain by the Holy Spirit, each a mass of blood, blasphemies, and broken bones. Immediately, I heard my mother's frantic cry as she burst through the screen door. My parents raced to their child, finishing in a tie. The Civil War veteran heaved Noah's large, lifeless body as his wife grabbed her broken son's arm and pulled him free of his mount. Brilliant flashes of light and pain exploded, and piercing shrieks broke free from the son's throat. Then, blackness and silence. Mother said I had passed out. I limp to this day. Events that followed our mother's version of the story. She and father hitched the wagon up to our mare, Darcy, and made haste to her brother, Dr. Luke Dean, who lived in town. The Lord, in his infinite mercy, kept me unconscious during the journey. Mother took me in to Dr. Luke, while father bounded over to the town constable to report the crime. Father told the constable Black Hat was trying to extort money by claiming to have come with foreclosure papers on our property. The mistake Black Hat made, however, was our home was not built on borrowed money, but stick by stick by my grandfather Horace and his sons. Father knew that these men were dangerous, and commanded by my mother, without so much as a word, to stay in the house for safety. County deputies raced to our farm, where Black Hat and his posse had escaped. Father, Dr. Luke, and our local constable learned that Black Hat had been terrorizing other farmers in Minnesota with the same evil plot. They were never caught, to my knowledge. Over time, I healed, but I never forgot. I tried to talk to Father about that day, 
He says he has no recollection of the fight or lifting Noah's body off of me. And he utters little about the event. The good Lord helped me do what I needed to do are his only words. Being a common man with few words, Father downplayed his valor when others asked for a retelling. Mother told me that Civil War veterans don't dwell on such memories. It isn't part of their fabric. Cook men have always been unassuming. Quiet. But I was told that was because they didn't have much to say. As I remember, he never corrected Mother, never acknowledging his heroism, and he never accepted the accolades of others when they were given. <laughs>